doctor. Uh, so today uh, we have a case discussion and uh, the presenter will be Dr. Uh, Saroj. So Dr. Saroj was uh, kind enough to volunteer uh, to present a case today to us. This was a case which he has uh, seen in his institute. So he has collected the data. He has collected uh, uh, the various uh, investigations of the same patients. He has made a PPT and sent it to us. So uh, this particular PPT, uh, Dr. Uh, SM Tuli sir has not seen. So he's not aware of what the case is. So uh, I would request uh, the student to present it in such a way so that uh, sir understands uh, from the history what it is and how you confirm whether your differential diagnosis in your history is what you thought about. Okay, so that's what uh, the flow should be. Uh, so with this, I think I would uh, uh, invite Dr. Saroj to present the case. Before that, uh, Dr. Saroj, you can just give a, a brief introduction of yourself uh, to sir as well as the other students. Dr. Saroj. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, happy Teacher's Day, sir. Thank you. My name is uh, Saroj Sam, and I am third year resident. I just started third year. Okay. Yes, Good. Sir. Okay. So uh, I think uh, you can start your presentation. Sir, uh, Miss G, a 12 year female. Uh, 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 she was apparently well one and a half year back. Uh, then she developed she has the right inguinal region and the uh, and which was in serious in onset and the progressive and the non radiating but it was aggravated on walking and the relief with medication and the pain was severe in in uh, intensity and uh, and it was associated with night cries and the patient also complained of a limping and the limping was painful uh, and it was progressive and the patient was uh, uh, getting a difficulty in doing the uh, activities of a daily living, that is the routine activities, and uh, it was associated with uh, difficulty in walking, and uh, which was progressive. And uh, after three months, uh, patient started developing the deformities of right hip, which was progressive and associated with shortening of right lower limb compared to left, and it was associated with uh, limitation of the movement and the difficulty uh, it, to, to sit with cross leg. And uh, for last two months, uh, patient is on wheelchair mobilization. And uh, uh, there is a history of on and off fever and the significant weight loss, loss of appetite. And uh, there was overcrowded in family, even number of uh, members uh, living in a single room and in less space. And there was no history of trauma, no any congenital disorder, no other joint pain and swelling, no uh, history of steroid intake or there's no history of morning stiffness. And the treatment history, uh, on treatment history, uh, patient initially, uh, patient, uh, initially uh, hip spica was applied for one and a half months. And uh, and the full, uh, last uh, two months, uh, two months back underwent uh, synovial biopsy for which, uh, and the CBNAT comes to be positive and the, uh, still uh, clinically we suspect uh, hip TB. So ATT was started and the patient was kept on skeletal traction. Okay. So uh, you're, you're done with your uh, history uh, presentation? History presentation, yes. No, no. So, okay. So your complaints uh, of the patient. So the patient presents to you with pain. So one complaint that you said was pain. The other one was a limp. And the third one was a deformity. Yes, sir. So, so your main chief complaints are these three. Okay. Yes, so whenever you start your presentation, so the first thing that you say is 12-year-old, that is the age of the child. So you understand that it is a pediatric age group. You say that it is a female. Anything else you want to add into this? You want to say what the uh, child is doing right now? Is she a student or is she going somewhere or is she working? Uh, she's a student, but uh, since due to uh, come this complaint, patient is uh, now she's on, she was on bed reading. Patient was, so, mobilization was difficulty. 
yeah so isn't that important so you understand that the child the child was a, a student who had to go to school and since the last one year she is disabled okay so it is always important whatever case you are uh, taking the in the initial uh, questions itself you should understand what that child is doing and what this particular complaints are causing disability to that particular uh, patient okay so that is very important so uh, whatever the name of the patient is is a 12 year female who is a student okay she comes with complaints of pain limp and deformity since the duration what you have mentioned over here okay yes yeah so the next one would be the history of presenting illness so in your history of presenting illness you have to describe in more detail about all these things three things okay so let us go in a systematic way okay so coming to the hopi now describe us the pain pain sir uh, uh, pain was started uh... I wrote 1.5 years back and the uh, pain was over the right inguinal region and which was in serious in onset and the okay. progress. So, so let us go slow for the other benefit of the other students also. So onset, you said it is insidious. Yes, sir. And next one would be, how is it progressing? Yes, sir. So how was it? Was it gradually progressing? Was it uh, suddenly increasing? Gradually progressing. So gradual. Okay. So now you tell me what is the duration? Yeah. 1.5 years. Okay. Now what was the type of pain initially? Was it the same or has it changed? Has it ready? What are the relieving factors? What are the aggravating factors? Mm -hmm. Dr. Saroj, we are not able to hear you. Pain was aggravated on mobilization, on walking, and it was relieved on uh, taking um, medication. And the pain was severe in intensity. So patient was taking medication to relieve. Okay. So in the initial stages, before one and a half years, the pain was uh, quite uh, significant. She was not able to walk. And it was relieved on medications. So what is the situation now? Is it relieved on rest? Is it relieved on medications even now? Even now, the uh, patient is uh, non-ambulatory. So, and the patient is uh, taking um, medication for pain. So, the pain is relieved now, sir. Patient is uh, not mobilizing now. Patient is on wheelchair, wheelchair on, on wheelchair mobilization. So, there is not much pain, sir. So you're saying uh, there is no uh, rest pain that the patient is having? Yes, sir. Okay. So is there any associated night pains? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So is that important in your case? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So what do you think is this uh, night cries you're talking about? You said the patient on rest when he's awake, when she's awake, she's not having pain. But when she's sleeping, obviously, when someone goes into rest and sleeps, the pain has to reduce. But this patient has night cries. What does that mean in this particular case? Uh, this, may be, this may be due to cell inflammation over okay, but that region and that leads to the pain. Yeah, okay. So inflammation causes pain. You are very right. But uh, the inflammation should be uh, causing the pain throughout, right? Even in the day also. Why only in night that the patient is having pain? So the, uh, at that time, the muscle is relaxed. No, sir. So. Okay. Yeah. So your answer should be the whatever the inflammation or the arthritis that is causing the pain usually leads to something known as a reflex spasm. Okay, so the reflex spasm is a protective me uh, mechanism for the pain. So once the patient goes into sleep, this reflex spasm is removed. And whatever the damaged uh, portion or the inflamed portion comes into contact with each other and suddenly the child gets up in her, in her or his sleep. So that is what is known as night pains or night cries.